Okay, so on Wednesday we looked at mic on here. Okay, so on Wednesday we looked at uh, um, sorry on Monday we looked at cookies. Um, cookies are a means of storing a little piece of information in the browser. Um, a temporary piece of information. The piece of information might um, last until the user closes their browser, or it might last until um, some expiration date that you set, or until the, uh, the user clears their cookies manually. Um, uh, so a little piece of information you can store there, and uh, it, the, the term originates from uh, an older networking term called magic cookie. Um, it just means like a little piece of information that I'm giving to you, I'm the server, I'm giving this to you, the client, you hold on to this, and then anytime you make another request to me, just give it back to me so that I know who you are. It doesn't mean anything to you, it means something to me. So I'm just going to give you that, let you hold on to that, and give it back to me later. Um, today we're going to uh, look at something similar. Um, it's called sessions, um, which is sort of kind of like cookies, but on the server side. Um, it, it, it's different than that, but, um, it, and it actually makes use of, cli of, of cookies on the, on the client side as well. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's basically a, a server-side storage um, using PHP, temporary storage. So a cookie um, can exist either until the user uh, closes their browser, um, a transient cookie. Um, in the previous slides, this was called a session cookie. I changed that to a transient cookie just so there isn't confusion between what we're doing today and this type of cookie. Um, a transient cookie. Um, gets closed, uh, gets deleted when the browser closes, uh, when the user closes their browser. A persistent cookie gets stored in a file on the user's computer um, until uh, an expiration time that you specify or until they delete the cookie, whichever comes sooner. So you can optionally specify an expiration time for any cookie that you set, and if you do, this, that cookie will last until that expiration date. Um, a session, um, which is what we're going to be discussing today, is uh, it doesn't really exist. It's sort of a, it's a concept of multiple uh, multiple requests and responses. So the browser requests a page from the server, the server responds. Browser requests another page from the server, the server responds. That those two requests um, sort of constitute a session. This this single client is making multiple requests, a browsing session with this server. So that's, that's what we, um, we sort of group those, those requests into a session. Um, it doesn't exist in, PH, in, uh, in HTTP. HTTP doesn't have the concept of sessions. There's no way of, of keeping track of the fact that this browser has made several different requests to the same server. Um, the server might be able to notice that this, uh, this browser has made several different requests. Um, but uh, in order to do that, it needs to make use of cookies. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, Cookie is stored as data, as data on the client. Um, if we open up a session data store um, on the server using PHP, that session's data is stored um, across page requests for that, for, that, for that user, for that client. And that's going to be stored on the server side. Um, in PHP, you can ask PHP to give you a session storage, and it'll allocate some storage for you that you can pull stuff in. And then uh, you can load that stuff later on when the user makes another request. <coughs> Sessions are often built on top of cookies. Um, so what actually happens is that, uh, well, well, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, so this is how sessions are established. <coughs> the web browser uh, initiates uh, a request to the, user, uh, to, the, to the web server. The server responds. And sets a cookie, sets a cookie called PHP sesh ID, PHP sesh ID, and this cookie gets set sent to the browser, and on all subsequent requests, the, the browser sends that cookie back. These indicate to the server that this is the same person. So what the server can do is it can allocate some space, um, some storage like a file or a directory or entries in, in a database or something um, to store information uh, that we want to keep track of between page requests. So 
Um, when the PHP script runs here, it might determine what their username is and password or something, or like, um, you know, store their, um, uh, I don't know, billing information. Maybe we're on a multiple page um, checkout process. And we want to store their billing information and credit card information until we get to the end of the process. And then we'll finally run all the information um, and then we'll delete all the information uh, from disk. So maybe in this, in this uh, request, we're getting their name and billing information. And in this request, we're getting their um, uh, like shipping information and like, uh, I don't know, uh, something else like uh, gift wrap information, stuff like, stuff like that. So we're getting two pieces of information on these two separate requests. Each time we store that information to the session storage so that the next request, we can load that information back into memory again. Um, and then we can make use of it. And then in the final request of the session, once we've got all the piece of pieces of information, we load it all together, we charge the credit card, we you know, make, make the, the, the entry in the shipping database or whatever, um, and, and then we can delete the information from the session storage. So this is kind of like cookies on the server side. We're storing some stuff on the server side in between, across sessions. Um, but it, it has to, in order for this to work, it has to make use of um, this, this cookie here, this PHP sesh ID cookie. Why is this cookie necessary? I mean, we could like, you know, this, this, this person probably has an IP address, right? Yeah, they have an IP address. Everybody has an IP address on the internet. Could we just track this user's um, usage by their IP address? We can get access to the IP address by, I don't know if you remember this from a couple days ago, but we can use, um, let's see, server, server uh, remote address, I think is what it is, something like that. That will be the, the client's IP address, something like that, or like it's remote IP or something, something like that. We could use their IP address. What's wrong with that? Yeah, if, if their internet connection came down, came down and, and then went back online, um, their, their router might assign them a different IP address or, or something like that. The DHCP server might assign them a different IP address. Or if, like, if there are several people on a home network, I don't know if you know this, but on home networks, oftentimes your router has a single external IP address on the internet. Everybody shares that single IP address on the internet. And internally, you have sort of an internal IP address, and the router sort of uh, handles the job of distributing the, the incoming connections based on what it knows about your computer. So it forwards any incoming connections to you know, your IP address on the local internet. Um, and and uh, so it, it, it handles the, the sort of distribution of, of traffic internally. Um, so many, many people can have the same IP address, actually. Um, not only that, but like if this was a, if this machine was like, I don't know, if multiple people were using this machine simultaneously, um, if lots of people were logged in and using like shell scripts or something and each shell, shell script did something different, um, then, you know, each, um, I don't know, you conceivably have multiple people even on the same machine uh, having different sessions. Anyhow, so, um, it, Sessions are established, have to be established at the browser level. So the browser has to, um, to store a cookie that indicates that this person is, is this, this unique identifier. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, so the server sends this cookie um, at, at the initial request, and the uh, browser sends it back on any um, subsequent requests. And what this does is this indicates to the server that this is this person that we established in, the, in their first session. Um, it can then load the, um, the, the server-side storage associated with that person. Um, <clears throat> okay, yeah. Um, there are many differences between sessions and cookies. Actually, they're, um, uh, they're, 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 they are similar, but they, they have a lot of differences. Um, the duration, sessions live on until the user logs out or closes the browser, cookies can live that long or until a given fixed timeout persistent. Um, actually, this isn't entirely true. Um, sessions will live until the server cleans up. Um, oftentimes, uh, the user won't log out explicitly. So um, ideally, the user might log out explicitly and tell the server, OK, I, you can clean up my session storage now. 
it's okay. Um, I'm done with this session. Um, but oftentimes ses sessions just sort of end. Um, users just close the browser window, they don't come back. Maybe you add stuff to a shopping cart or something and uh, the shopping cart information is stored in a session database on the server. Um, and this happens a lot. People add stuff to their cart and see how much it would cost and be like, yeah, maybe I don't, don't need that actually after all. I'll just you know close the browser window, I'll sleep on that and then never come back. Um, so, so sessions uh, oftentimes sort of just get truncated and the server has to sort of decide how long do I keep this, this user's session data around uh, um, before they, you know, to, to see if they're gonna make a new, a new request. Um, and uh, oftentimes the, the server will just sort of, after, after the session has been around and unused for you know, uh, five minutes or something, it'll just automatically delete all the, the session information. Um, but that's configurable. That's configurable on the server side. So cookies, uh, cookies can live um, until the user closes the browser session. Um, sessions uh, don't necessarily go away when when the user closes their browser. Uh, the the data storage location sessions store data on the server. Usually, it's like in a file somewhere, but you can uh, configure it to be like in a like a MySQL database if you want. Um, cookies. Um, are stored just in the browser's cookie storage. It's usually just in a file somewhere on the, on the computer. Sessions are hard for malicious users to tamper with or remove. Cookies are easy. So any, any cookie that's set in the browser, we, we saw um, anybody who has access to your browser can just go into preferences and um, take a look at individual cookies. You know, I'm going to go look at, you know, Facebook. I haven't logged on to Facebook here. Twitter, um, here we go. So um, I can look at the Twitter cookies, um, the, the cookies that Twitter has given me. And if we, if, cook, if Twitter is bad and like stored my password here somewhere, we'd be able to see it. So there's a guest ID cookie here whose value is this. Um, that's gibberish to me. That just doesn't mean anything. It's not certainly not my password. Um, let's see, OAuth token. Let's see, that's also not my password. Um, so all of these, all of these cookies stuff, uh, we could explicitly store like you know foobar here if you wanted to. We would see foobar. Um, all of this information, uh, the the developer can store poorly if they want to. Um, in which case, uh, it, it makes it easy to uh, to exploit. Um, but because uh, session data is stored on the server. Uh, only certain people have access to the data on the server. So the server is much more secure. Um, <coughs> presumably it's pretty, pretty, pretty well locked down. Um, let's see, sessions also protect private information be from being seen by other users of the computer. Cookies do not. So if multiple people share the same computer, um, if you all have the same login account, then, you know, again, somebody can go, just go in here and take a look at your cookies. But session stuff are, is all stored on the server. <clears throat> so in, in order to indicate that you want a session to create a new session, you call the session start function in PHP. What this does is if the server hasn't seen the user before, that is if the sesh I, PHP sesh ID cookie was not given to us by the, by the browser, that means it hasn't been set on them yet, so we haven't seen this user yet, right? So if there was no session cookie, then I'm going to send the user a session cookie, and I'm gonna create a new session storage for this user. Uh, a new session is created, I'm gonna create a new session storage for this user. Um, otherwise, so if the, if the client did give us the session cookie that indicates that we have seen them before and this is their session ID, um, then we just load the data associated with that session ID. So two different requests. The first initial request, we've never seen them before, we give them a session ID and we allocate space uh, according to that session ID. The second time when they come back, they give us the cookie that says this is my session ID and we just go look up that session ID. Um, <clears throat> In order to store stuff into session storage, we, we put stuff in it just like we would put stuff in an associative array. Um, just like setting um, cookies, uh, well actually it's a little bit different from setting cookies. With setting cookies you have to call the set cookie function. Um, 
And we never really assign stuff to like dollars and underscore get dollars and underscore post. That's always taken care of for us. But with sessions, we do uh, actually just assign data into this global session uh, array. So we assign a value to be associated with this key. Um, this value can be a number, a string, an array, an object. It can be any arbitrary type of, of, uh, of content. It can be uh, actually fairly sophisticated. Um, <clears throat> and then just to load it, again, we just say, we just get information from that. Um, we can check to see if a particular value is being stored in the session by checking to see if that key is set, just like we do with uh, get and post and cookie. Um, if is set session points, points gets uh, whatever value is stored there, and we print out you've earned that number of points. Otherwise, so the, that, that value has not been set in session, we're going to initialize, initialize that, that value in the session to zero points. You've earned zero points. So let's just go do this. Do this real quick. Save this in points. OK. Um, as, as it is, this isn't going to do anything. This isn't going to work. Why not? This is missing something essential. So we're, we're storing stuff to the session data, but we haven't indicated that we, that we are actually going to be using sessions yet. We haven't told PHP to either load the current session or initiate a new session. And we do that using this. So this is actually, this has to come before anything, basically. Session start has to come before everything we, we do with sessions. So let's go back over here. Points, points.php. You've earned zero points. Refresh, you've earned zero points. <laughs> OK, so nothing's happening. Let's go take a look at uh, our cookies here, local host. Um, so we didn't look at this before, but now we have a, a PHP sesh ID cookie. This is our session ID. Um, so let's go take a look at why this isn't working. So uh, when we say session start, it's going to um, it's going to allocate a new session for us. Um, if this is set, then we're going to um, then we're going to get the value from it. Oh, <laughs> you know we never actually increment this. Um, Okay, so we'll we'll say that uh, we'll say let's, uh, let me indent this here. Um, we'll say that plus one. There we go. At one point. <laughs> um, Let's see, session points equals session points plus one. Okay, so why why is it why is it only ever one point now? Yeah. Plus equals one? Um, yeah, so why why would plus equals be different? Yeah, it would add one to the value that's stored in here, right? So what we're what we're missing basically is we need to say this equals that now. So we need to store back to the session session storage. In fact, um, what we could do to make this a little bit cleaner is we could just move this out here. We could say points equals um, session points like that. Let's do this. Uh, then we can say points equals zero. And then in either case, we're going to store plus one, there we go. In either case, we're going to store it back to the session. So if the points value is set, then we're going to get it and add one to it, and that's going to be our new points. Otherwise, our new points is going to be zero. In either case, we store our new points back to the session. Points, points. 
Every time I refresh, it changes. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> so that's just a, a super uh, quick and easy example of a session. Um, this particular example, like we could just replace this with cookie and it would be identical. Um, in this particular example, um, it, it's not a, a very illustrative um, uh, example of, of what the differences are between sessions and cookies. Um, but for example, if I wanted to store, like if I had a, um, a user information array, no, uh, we'll say like a billing address equals an array. And we have um, street one, uh, one, two, three, four, main street. Street two, um, apartment 404. I used to have an apartment 404. I was like, Ooh, I got, I got a cool number. Um, let's see, uh, city and so on. Uh, zip, you know, whatever, 98122. So we, uh, if we have like this, this billing address array, we can store that to session storage by saying session billing address equals billing address. So this is a, a, a more complex object. This is a, an associative array, and we're storing the entire associative array in session storage. And then we can load it back later on just as a full array. We can't do that with cookies. So that's a, an important difference. Um, OK, let's continue. Yeah, I should just rewrite that slide, because that slide just totally didn't work at all. Uh, so where is the session data stored? So the cookie, the session cookie is stored in the client's browser, obviously. On the server, session data is usually just stored in a file somewhere. Um, often slash TMP. If this is a Unix system, it's often slash TMP slash temp is um, usually just like where just junk temporary stuff is stored um, and stuff that you don't really care about being deleted. Um, the, the system might go through periodically and just delete everything in there and you'd have to deal with it. Um, uh, so it just sort of stores stuff there temporarily. You can change where, uh, where it's stored using session save path. Um, you can also um, establish functions as handlers um, for session data storage and store in a SQL database if you want to, something, something completely different. Session timeout. So uh, the, the server never really knows when the, the user is going to continue with their session. Um, and you might have seen this happen before if you, you know, get two steps along in a five-step ordering process. Um, and then, you know, your mom calls and you're like, uh, you know, you talk for three hours and, um, and you come back and you're like, you know, okay, click uh, continue. It says, sorry, <laughs> your session has expired. Um, at, what they mean is that because you haven't, uh, because you haven't continued, um, at, there was a timeout and, and you're, you went past the timeout. So we deleted your data because we didn't think you were coming back. Um, so uh, ideally the user would uh, just actually tell you I'm not coming back, um, but most often that doesn't happen. When, you, when the user just closes the browser window, the server just never hears from them again. And at some point, the server has to just sort of say, okay, I'm just gonna delete that session because I don't think they're coming back. Um, <clears throat> which, it, which is totally different from the client deleting the cookies when the browser window closes. When the, when the browser window closes, the browser knows, okay, they're, they're closed, they close the window, I can delete the, the cookie. Um, but the server doesn't get notified of that. <clears throat> so you can, uh, you can adjust the, um, the cache expiration time uh, using uh, sa cache session cache expire. Um, you can s tell it to, I, I think the default is probably like five minutes or something. Um, you can tell it to wait you know, 30 minutes if you want, you know, kind of living on the edge. But, um, or you can tell it to, to wait only a minute or whatever, I don't know, whatever, whatever you want. Uh, you can explicitly end a session if you want to, like if you've uh, gotten to the end of the ordering process and you're like, okay, 
I've I've finished the order. I've 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 dinged the credit card. I've um, you know sent everything, the shipping information out. I'm done with this session. I can I can explicitly end this session um, before I I I go to their thank you. Uh, we've we've uh, completed your order page. Um, so I can call session destroy to do that. Um, apparently, I've never run into this, but apparently, if you uh, try to destroy and then restart um, in the same like request, um, then you might actually get some data carried over from the previous session. So um, you might have to call a session regenerate um, if that happens. Um, I've never done that, though. <clears throat> Common session bugs. So it's common to forget to, to use session start to begin a session. Session start has to come first in it, before you uh, before you try to access the session a variable. Um, the session start has to come first, um, and the reason for that is that it when you do session start, it knows that's when uh, it knows I have to look for the PHP session ID cookie, um, and that's when it loads the uh, the session data from storage. Um, so the session data hasn't been loaded at this point because we haven't got to session start yet. Um, <clears throat> right. So let's do a quick practice problem. Power animal. Write a page power animal .php that chooses a random power animal for the user. Page should remember what animal was given, uh, what animal was chosen for the user, and show it again each time they visit the page. Should also count the number of times that user has visited the page. User selects to start over, the animal and number of page visits should be forgotten. Um, so I have the power, power, power animal. We have paranimal.php. I feel like I sound like I'm from the Midwest today. Um, we have paranimal.php. Um, so we've got uh, Power Animal Finder, uh, and we have an image here. There, we're going to have an image, and the images look like Kimsa, bee, llama, octopus, rabbit, and squirrel, and yak. So these are our power animals, and we're going to We're going to write some PHP script, PHP code, to um, determine what their power animal is. We're going to randomly choose a power animal, and we're going to save this person's power animal in session. Um, and we're also going to save their um, the uh, the number of times that they visited in the session. Um, so what we can probably do is start with something similar to what we just did. Um, well, we're going to have to start the session to begin with, right? So session start. Um, and then from that point on, we can probably just check to see if we've already set a particular session value. If is set session uh, animal, we'll call it power animal. And then we're going to load that animal. Animal equals that. Otherwise, we're going to say animal is some random animal from the list of animals. A um, couple different ways we could get the list of animals. How would you recommend doing, doing this list of animals? We have image files here. Glob, yes, good idea. You remember it all the way back from uh, homework, what, four? Um, so glob is the function that we can call to get a list of files. So glob star.png. This will list all of um, the, uh, the, the PNG images in the current directory. So that is a list of those. And we can do, um, if we want to get a, a, a random one of those, let's, uh, let's store that to a list of animals. Animals. And then you can choose one randomly by saying, like, rand equals, what do we get? A random number? Is it? Rand, yeah, rand. Um, let's look this up. I forget how to use rand. It's different in every language. So php.net rand. 
Okay, so min and max um, are the arguments. Okay, so we want uh, to, to get a random number between 0 and, oh, is this inclusive or exclusive? Between 5 and 15, inclusive, 5 and 15. So uh, we want to do rand and then count animals minus 1. So that's uh, the random number. Then we can get um, animals bracket rand. There we go. So we got a random animal. Um, so that will be the, the name with the .png file extension to it. Um, what we're going to probably want is to strip that off the end. Um, let's see. We can do, uh, no, we can do uh, stir replace. Let's see. Let's also look up stir replace. Stir replace. To replace search replace subject that's the order of things so search is the string we're looking for we're going to look for PNG the replacement is going to be an empty string and the subject is going to be this okay so we're going to replace all dot PNGs with this empty string and this and that's going to return just the animal with it with the PNG stripped off the end Okay. In either case, we're going to store power animal equals animal. So in either case, we've set it. Um, if, uh, if this value is previously set, we're just going to restore it. We're just going to figure that out. Otherwise, we're going to establish their power animal, and then uh, we're going to uh, actually... In this case, we need to save it, but in this case, we don't. We just need to remember it. Yeah. Okay. Your power animal is the animal. Animal. So this is where we're injecting animal. I'm a rabbit. Woo. And every time I refresh the page, it's there. If I copy the URL, close this, this tab, and paste it back, it remembers who I am because I still have that, that cookie. Um, if I hit reload, um, reload, uh, let's take a look at this reload here. We've got a form that submits back to this page. And uh, when we submit, it just, basically this has the effect of just making a new get request to this page without any parameters being passed. But it, we want to, um, if we have this start over checked, we want to um, erase the current session. Um, and we want to create a new power animal. So why don't we say uh, oh, so this is all in a form, and this form submits back to itself, but so, and this checkbox here has the name of erase. Um, so if we basically, so how will this, this erase show up in, from the PHP side? Yeah, get um, erase. So the name attribute is erase. So we're going to get erase here. Um, so we can say if is set, get erase. Then we want to delete any, I don't know what it is with my spelling during lecture. Like outside of lecture, I'm like, woo, but during lecture, I'm like, eat, you know. Um, any existing uh, session. <coughs> um, and to do that, we're going to go back to this here. So if we want to destroy a session and create another one um, during the current session, then we're going to have to do this. So session destroy, session regenerate ID, session start. 
Um, so we can basically just do that. Okay, so that should work. Reload, I'm still the rabbit. Start over, reload. Oh, trying to destroy uninitialized session. Oh, uh, looks like I might need to have already loaded the session before I do that. Session start. So then we might have to start a new one like that. How does that sound? Start over. Oops. It's not doing it. Um, these sessions will linger. Session destroy. Session regenerate. Session start. And destroy uninitialized session line 13. So we have to have started the session, and then we can destroy it, and then we can. Maybe it just really likes me as the rabbit. <laughs> there we go. We finally got a new one. Okay. Um, okay. So we managed to uh, destroy the session. Maybe I uh, didn't need that session to start. Anyhow, um, so uh, another example of, of the, the types of stuff that you can store in a session. Uh, but we're going to do a, a more sophisticated example now. We're going to move on to um, doing a login system. Um, sessions are often used for login systems as well as as well as cookies. Um, so we can we can do a, a login system using either or. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, so we're going to uh, create a login page that'll allow us to log in before we submit a homework assignment. So we did a turn in, uh, we did like a, a turn in page uh, several weeks ago when we um, uploaded like one of our homework assignments when we uh, turn in. We're going to add to that the feature of um, uh, logging in before and then remembering the user's login information when, when they submit the page. Um, so in this example, uh, if we have, uh, oftentimes you see save username and password on this computer. This is Facebook, it looks like. Um, how, would we, how would we implement this? Where would we store this kind of information? Would we store this as a cookie or as a session? Session? I hear session a lot. Why session? Because when you exit out of your browser, you, you want it to still be there? You want it to not be there? I, I well, I think the, the idea of this is that, like, so save username and password on this computer. If you, if you exit out of the browser and come back later, then you want to still be logged in. If, um, so if you exit out of your browser, shut down your computer, go away for a couple of days, and come back, do you think the session is still going to be there? Probably not. Yeah, so it, it would probably be best to store it as a cookie. Um, well, yeah, okay, so, so you're saying that you could store information in the cookie um, that's just sort of like a token that um, when you, you make a new request to the server, the server looks up their information somewhere in a database. Yeah, so that's sort of like a, that's sort of like, so, okay, so what we've been doing today is sort of like the server side analogy to um, a, a transient cookie, transient cookie that goes away when you uh, like close your browser window. So session storage is sort of like that. It's very temporary. It expires after a few minutes and then it just goes away. Um, but what you could do is you could also uh, establish a, a, a persistent cookie on the user's computer, and that persistent cookie could contain some sort of you know token that allows the server to be able to identify what user they are um, by looking up in a database what user they are, um, and and the the information in the database might be permanent. Their username and password information, that login authentication information, is permanent. So that sort of 
you, you can also have very permanent sort of session storage um, on the server. It's not really a session then, but it's it's just more permanent storage. Um, yeah, so this is a great a great place to implement um, uh, to to use a a, a persistent cookie um, so that when the user comes back um, within you know within the expiration time within you know a couple of weeks or so. Um, their username and password will, will still, uh, still be remembered. Uh, we're not actually going to save their username and password as a cookie. Um, what we really want to do is, is just save sort of uh, a little token um, as a cookie that indicates that they authenticated um, successfully at some time in the past. Because um, if we actually save their username and password information, then uh, you know somebody else who has access to their computer could go in and look at their cookies and find out what their username and password are. So that would not be a good thing. <clears throat> so let's do this. Uh, we're going to add, add the um, the login information and the remember me information to the turn in. So we have this turn in page here. Um, looks like it's got some errors. Uh, we might need to fix. Um, turn in .php. Okay, so we didn't uh, we didn't check to see if there was a form submission here. Um, okay, maybe I copied the wrong one. So I'm copying the unfinished one. It's uploading, turn in. Uh huh? Yeah, I think I copied the unfinished version. There. there we go. Okay, um, so we have this turn-in page. Um, we want to enter our username and pass our, our name and student ID and section and so on and upload our file. Um, what happens is, let's see, so we have a form. So this is the page. We have, uh, so this is a self-submitting form. Um, Let's go find the form. Form action equals empty string. Um, that means that the, the, the page submits back to itself uh, using a post method um, with this encoding type. This enc type equals multi-part form data. If you remember, this allows us to upload files, upload large, uh, large files. Uh, in order to do that, we have an input type equals file. Input type equals file is how you um, is how you uh, indicate a file upload. So there's our file upload. Allows you to select a file. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to add to this. We're going to add a login page. So if we go to this page initially without having been logged in, we're going to be redirected to the login page. We log in. It's going to check their username and password, and then it's going to um, uh, if they authenticate successfully, then they're going to go to this page, and on this page, this page will remember who they are um, at, by looking in the session uh, information about them. So let's create a login.php. Uh, login. Form. Um, we can make this form submit back to itself as well. Action equals empty string. Method equals post. So if we make this form submit back to itself, back to the same page, it'll submit back to uh, login.php using a post request. And then up here we can differentiate between a get request and a post request if is set. If um, in parentheses, server request method is a post, then we'll handle login, um, you know, authenticate. Else we will um, actually we'll just not do anything. Um, so let's see. So we're going to want a 
maybe username. Text, username, password, so equals password, um, put out place orders. Submit button. Log me in. Login.php. Okay. Please log in. Foo. Username. Password. Log me in. Uh, so what we'll do is, uh, for this example, we're going to be really, um, really ghetto about this and just like um, we're not gonna we're not gonna authenticate to a database we're not gonna do anything fancy we're just going to um, check to see if is set post username and post username is equal to MDC and is set Post password and post password password equals um, here. Then uh, we will consider them to have successfully authenticated. Um, and what we're going to do in this case is we're going to do something that we never really um, touched on very well in lecture. Um, I kind of just breezed by it. There was on a slide somewhere and I just skipped it. Um, we're going to do something called a redirect. Um, and this is going to be really, really useful sometimes. Um, if you want to um, if you want to just end this current page and go to a different page, you want to tell the browser, just go to this other page here. Um, uh, you can issue a redirect. And the way that we do that is we use the header function, header, the PHP header function, we say location, um, and we're going to we're gonna redirect them to turnin.php, and then we're going to exit. So as soon as we send this header to the, the browser, the browser is going to say, uh, this location header indicates that I should, this, this, this request is done, I should go load this other page instead. Um, and then we can exit here just to make sure that we don't actually output any of the rest of this page. So if we successfully authenticate, we're going to do that. Um, else, maybe we'll say like, um, you know, uh, well, no. What we can do is down here we can say if we want we want to display an error, we want to redisplay this this uh, this form if uh, if they have an error, right? So we want to say if um, server request method equals post. If we've gotten to this point, we haven't exited, and it's a post, then that means that uh, that there was an error, that they didn't authenticate properly. Um, Yeah, so if we didn't go into this if statement, then that means that they're this this fixed username and password were not correct. So we can say you didn't log in correctly. And okay. So let's just uh, do this real quick. Yeah. Right, yeah. So um so username mducy i less than three beer log me in excellent so it redirected me to the uh, the turnin page let's let's try and mess this up it says you didn't log in correctly man excellent um, the other thing I want to do is um, if they if we've successfully um, authenticated what I want to do is I want to start a session. 
and I want to store um, the user's username in the session so that over here I will have access to their username. So let's see. Say your UW net ID. Um, username. So we have this other field here for UWNet ID, and I want to populate that with whatever they've entered here. I'm going to make this um, uh, disabled equals, we'll make this read only. So I won't be able to change this. I can't modify this. Actually, disabled is probably better. Disabled. There we go. Um, we're trying to inject an undefined variable in there right now, but uh, we'll fix that in a sec. So when we log in, what we want to do is, if we've successfully logged in, I want to start a session. And then I want to assign username equals post username. So we start the session, we um, store this information to the session, um, and over here what we can do is we can, so we, we want to do a couple things on Turnin. First we want to check to see if their username has been set. If their username has been set in the session, then that means that they've logged in. If they haven't logged in, then we want them to log in. So we're going to have to redirect them to login.php. So check to see that user has logged in. So if, so we'll start the session. If is set session username, then we will say username equals session username. Load it from the session. Otherwise, that means that they haven't logged in, so we're going to have to redirect them. So we're going to do the same kind of thing we did over here. Redirect but we're going to redirect to login.php instead. <clears throat> okay, so if we load turnin.php, it tells us to log in. Um, and you'll notice that, okay, so this is, I, I didn't actually expect this. Um, so, oh no. Let's log in correctly here. And do see I uh, less than three year. Okay, excellent. So if we refresh this, anytime we refresh this page, it knows that we're that we are who we who we are. So we see the UW net ID is pre-populated there, and we can't enter anything there in that field. Um, but if we refresh over in this tab. So this tab has a completely separate um, temporary cookies which is kind of cool. So uh, it doesn't know that um, I, I've logged in over here. So if I look at, um, let's see, local host, PHP session ID. Um, actually, it's kind of weird because um, it's going to be overwritten if I log in here as somebody else, which I can't because I've hard-coded MDC, but um, interesting. Okay, well the last thing I want to do is I want to, um, just one more thing. Oh yeah, uh, I want to make it so that I store a cookie, uh, a, a persistent cookie for maybe two weeks or so that indicates what their username is. Um, so that, um, uh, so that the next time they, they, they come back to log in, their username will be pre-populated here in the login 
page. So it'll say MDUCI um, if you logged in with MDUCI last time. Um, I'm going to have to slightly modify it then to, um, let's see, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's fine. So uh, I want to make it so that there's a cookie that we get, that we save. If they log in correctly, we'll set a cookie for that username, not for the password, just, just for the username, um, for uh, two weeks or so. So let's do a cookie when we set the session. We'll say set cookie. Uh, we'll also call it username, and the value will be um, post username. Um, and the third parameter here, this optional third parameter, is the expiration time. Um, this is a fixed time. We don't just say like you know two weeks from now. We say like we say the date of two weeks from now. Um, and the date we express in the Unix epoch time. Um, which is the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. So let's see. So time is the current number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. If we want to say two weeks from now, then we just uh, multiply uh, 60 seconds times 60 minutes times, uh, uh, that's an hour, times 24 hours times seven days times two weeks. There we go. So now plus two weeks from now. So that the next time we re, uh, request the turning, um, if we if the session is dead, but we come back later on to log in, um, it will pre-populate. Let's if is set cookie. Username, username equals cookie username. Else, username equals just an empty string. And we'll pre populate here username. Um, okay, we haven't set the cookie yet. MDUC. I less than three beer. Okay, go back to login, and it pre-populates my, my username. Um, I want to show you guys real quick uh, before we go. I want to show you the next homework assignment, just so you guys uh, see what it looks like. Uh, so let's take a look. It's a, um, oh, I can't look at it here. I have to look at it. Um, yes, this is the last homework. Um, okay, sorry, I have to put this on Webster, and I haven't put it on Webster, so I'll show you guys the next homework assignment on Friday. Um, I will show you right now, though, that um, uh, the sample final exams have been posted. Uh, we'll, we'll go over sample finals in section on Tuesday of next week. Um, on the course website, you can just go to the exams section and, uh, oh, I guess I haven't uploaded it yet. Exam section. Um, this indicates what types of problems there will be on the final. And then all the way down at the bottom of the page are a list of all past final exams. Um, so the past final exams, you can you can pretty much count on any of the most recent final exams. It'll it'll just follow the same same type of format, uh, except it'll be spread across two days. So uh, see you guys on Friday. What exactly are you going to be doing in class on Friday? Because there's a good chance that I don't be here. Just if it's something that I can like watch the screencast on or something.